Hello, Steve Long here to talk to you about polycast concrete drains. These drains are made of polymer, cement, and sand for the aggregate and create a high strength, thin material, very solid and strong, to be used in concrete. New construction as well as retrofit. So let's go take a look at an installation right now. The problem? We need a drain to take away any water that may flood our loading dock area. The solution? Polycast 600 series with a cast iron frame and a cast iron grate. So this application in a warehouse floor at a dock area, we're just sizing it up right now. Like Tinker Toys, we're piecing these uh, polycast drains together. You guys remember what Tinker Toys are, right? Am I that old? So four foot sections and two foot sections. On this run, we're going to have three four footers and one two footer. So that's going to give us a 14 foot run. And next we're going to cut our concrete. And our concrete's cut. That was easy. Now, when we cut our concrete and dig, we want to make sure we have four inches of space and clearance under and around the polycast drain so we can encase it with four inches of concrete. Each section's marked, so it's pretty easy to figure it out. 605, 606, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can just piece them together. Again, just like the old erector set and tinker toys. You guys remember that stuff, right? and um, just build it out and as you see in our installation instructions you learn how to put in the two foot sections and where to put them in you go from a 605 to a 605h a 615 to a 615h and 625 to a 625h and arrows on each channel makes it easy to see where the pitch is going so each channel has a pitch built into it 601 2 3 right on down the line so you get a flowing of X amount of gallons of water per minute depending upon how long the run is and how it's designed. In case you're not going to take the water right at the end of the channel and the run, we have bottom knockouts on the 605, 10, 15, 20, 25, and the half channels as well so that you can do a knockout and put a pipe fitting in and take the water out underneath the slab using a uh, U-channel. And at the ends, we can use a close end cap, just as you see here, close end to close that section of the channel out and end it. And of course, a drain end cap. So then we can terminate the channel at the end and do a knockout and bring your pipe right into this uh, drain fitting. And female and male fittings are available as well, depending on which way we're running. Sometimes we're running two drains into each other. Sometimes we're running two drains away from each other, and we need a fitting. Build into each drain our little inserts on each side so that we can put our lockdown device into the drain. And as you can see, we have a bolt that will fit down through the cast iron grate into the lockdown device. So our lockdowns are in place. We put our grate on top of the polycast channel, and then we bolt in through the grate into the lockdown device. Now, what you install is dependent upon what type of traffic goes over it. In this case, we're going to have hard-wheeled forklift traffic. So we're going to use a frame and a grate. So you see the cast iron frame in place there. We will then put our grate on top of it, cast iron as well. That is what's going to hold up to hard wheeled traffic. That's extremely important to know the traffic that's going to go over top of your drain. Using installation chairs here that you see right here at the butt joints of each intersection of the drain makes it incredibly easy to install these drains. Here you see our installation chair installed with a piece of rebar. You can also use a nail stake. And these make it incredibly easy to adjust the chair to get the correct height for the drain. It pounds into the soil, then we make our adjustments and piece them each together. Sometimes we need to take the water away somewhere else in a different section of the drain. We can actually core our drain, as we did here, and then insert a pipe and epoxy it and take it out of different sections of the drain out of the side. Our drain's installed, ready to go. These boards are in place. 
bolted down just to hold it, hold that drain in place so when the concrete's poured, it doesn't float up to the top above the slab. And here comes our concrete. We're going to shoot it in. As we're shooting it in, we're moving it around, consolidating with a vibrator um, underneath the uh, drain to make sure that we get all the uh, concrete vibrated, consolidated in tightly so it's encased in 3,000 PSI concrete. And Rich is going to finish it off, does his finishing on the side, and our drain's ready to go. So remember, prior to installation, know what type of traffic you will have to determine what kind of grates you're going to need. Determine how long of a run you're going to have, where your drains are going to end, are you going to take them out the bottom, out the end, do you need to take them out of the side, answer all those questions, that's going to help with your design. So if you need any help determining the gallons per minute, visit our website at www.mascon.com. We can direct you to the correct site and help you out with any of your needs.